Today on Design For You, we take a look at how to add more accessories and detail to your home. Our design makers are the various crafters and designers who showcase their work at this year's Design Joburg. Our featured guest is Kelly Adamy of Copperleaf Studio, and she will be giving us some tips on how to begin adding accessories and detail to your home. Then finally, Andrew McKenzie transforms a living space by adding natural elements as accessories. Get inspired always right here on Design For You. Hello there, my name is Pilani Bubu and you're watching Design For You. Accessories, detail and all that jazz is our design topic for the day. How do we accessorize and add detail to our home? Well, Kelly Adamy, who's not only an interior designer but also a design journalist, she writes and edits for some of South Africa's leading magazines and home decor brands. She'll be giving us tips on just that. But before we chat to Kelly, let's take a look at some of the interesting designers who showcased at this year's Design Joburg. Accessorizing is a quick and sure way to add detail and personality to any living space. Over the years, the interior design industry has seen many product designers creating accessories that are both art pieces and functional items. Among these product designers are the talented crafters who came together at this year's Design Joburg Show. We are a luxury brand of uh, creative ceramics. We're based in Woodstock, Cape Town. We started the business in 2006 uh, together with uh, Andile, my business partner. I love pattern, I love color, I love texture, and I always try to put that across. The latest work is inspired by my love for painting. I don't want to be limited when I'm in the studio. I want to be able to just to be free and, and, and play. I love design, and I always have. I love making things. I find every creative challenge, every new project, really excites me and it's always been that way for me since I was a child. At the show I'm launching the Simply chair which is uh, made from curved molded plywood, very much inspired by my Scandinavian heritage. So when it comes to furniture I, I try to um, create contemporary South African pieces but there always tends to be a Scandinavian influence. My mother is Norwegian so that comes through. So in interior design I'm a, a lot uh, wider in my style, but with my own uh, furniture pieces, it's a lot more expressing my personal taste. Myself and my business partner, Ari Geva, we manufacture and design luxury handmade lighting pieces. The piece we have on display today is called the Okamba Totem. We wanted to take our pieces and instead of showing them as individual pendant lamps, which is what they are, just put them together in a large sculptural installation and, and kind of broaden people's minds about what's possible with the work. It's actually all very handmade and it's quite detailed. It's, you know, it's in a, in a way it's kind of like fashion because we're working with um, fabric sheets. Even though they're made out of metal, it's still sheet material that we're cutting up and we're forming and we're, we're joining with seams and we're pleating it. So it's kind of like it's, it's weird combination of engineering and fashion. It's actually an industrial material and we've kind of um, processed it and turned it into this really luxurious decor material and it, it bounces light beautifully, it's transparent but also quite robust and very lightweight so it's perfect for lighting. Unique pieces like these make for interesting talking points in the home and our growing design scene offers plenty of items to help you give your home that extra appeal. A lot of colour and inspiration coming out of Design Joburg and a lot of detail which is what our particular point of interest is today. The materials, the use of fabrics and metals, bending them to shape them into something specific. I loved the lampshades with the pleats and the chair that's been inspired by the neck piece. But here to talk to us about accessories and detail is Kelly Adamy of Copperleaf Studios. She's been in the business since 2015. Welcome Kelly. Thanks for having me on the show. You've had quite an interesting journey, having started as a journalist and now interior designer. Tell us about that. 
Well, um, journalism and interior design have almost been concurrent themes throughout my career, and I've sort of bounced between them. Um, I, I worked in interior decor journalism for a long time, and that really gave me the inspiration to kind of take the final leap um, to starting my own business, which is really was, was always the ultimate goal. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how it happened. I was sort of a bystander watching all these people <laughs> doing amazing work and finally decided to take the plunge for myself. Can you tell us about any milestones that you've achieved you know, on your journey thus far? Probably the biggest milestone was taking part in the inaugural Design Joburg event. It was just the most exciting um, thing to be involved in a very collaborative um, process with a lot of high-end suppliers and also just to exhibit alongside such a high caliber of interior designers in the industry. It was really a great experience. Thank you Kelly. We'll continue talking a little later. After the break we continue to chat to Kelly around accessories and detail as she takes us through her home. Stay tuned. Welcome back, we have Kelly Adamy of Copperleaf Studio, journalist turned interior designer. We're in her home, in her living room, and in her world's eye, we're here to talk about accessories and detail. Kelly, now, a lot of people think that redecorating their home is like a big and an expensive task. How can they start with just a few simple accessories? Well, I think um, something worth mentioning is um, looking at the bones of your interior design scheme. So if you have already invested in pieces that you love that are going to last you a long time, then no, it won't be a very expensive thing to sort of take it from... Good to great. Good to great, mm -hmm. exactly. So for example, I have this um, sofa, which I'll probably keep for life, um, and I've just dressed it up with a couple of accessories like this beautiful um, animal fur throw and some beautiful velvet scatter cushions and it's really sort of transformed it and you can do that seasonally you can change the look seasonally with um, not too much expense. Thinking about the bones what are some of the examples of the big bones that you could use say in the living room or in a bedroom? I think it's really those items that you use every single day um, such as your sofa, your coffee table, um, the kind of big sort of expensive items that originally cost a lot of money but you will use them over your lifetime. So when you are buying those items, rather do consider spending a little little bit more money um, and, and buying something that you really love. Sure. And as the seasons change, the trends change. So if you've got your big bones and you're now very excited to choose more items, how do you actually accessorize with a certain direction or an idea in mind? I think what is really helpful to me and um, what could be helpful is to decide on a theme or concept for your design direction. So um, for example in my living room I've kind of mixed a 70s inspired colour palette with a, a nature inspired theme and, and if you are consistent um, in choosing accessories and decor items that, that stick with these themes then at the end of your process you'll have a very cohesive look. What are the other inspirations that are living here in terms of accessories? As I mentioned earlier, this um, beautiful furry thing. Yeah, I don't really know what to call it. Because <laughs> it's not a rug. It's, it's like, like an animal, <laughs> animal fur throw. Um, it just adds a lot of warmth. You can move it around the house, like if you want to take it to the study when you're working. That, that sort of thing. Um, table lamps and um, standing lamps are a very good way to fill up an awkward corner, provide a bit, little bit of light to a dark space. Um, and then also styling your coffee table. Um, things like pot plants, vases, candles, coffee table books. All of that makes a really big difference um, in taking your scheme from something that's really pretty and lovely to something that's really exceptional and um, really uniquely yours. It's one thing to bring the accessories into the space but there's actually practical tips that you could give us on how and you've done that in the space. Can you tell us how? Um, sure, just, just for example um, on the coffee table symmetry and balance is always a very good um, place to start so I've arranged the coffee table books in quite a formal way and with, in quite, with quite straight lines in a sort of grid-like fashion that's very pleasing on the eye um, and then I've counterbalanced that with a tray um, with a very asymmetrical arrangement on it. Nothing complicated, just a few of my favorite things. Um, a vase with some organic greenery, a beautiful um, 
succulent plant and a candle and then also a plate, a round plate just to break up um, the straight lines and that's really just a simple way to kind of make an ordinary coffee table look a little bit special. I just want to go back to your vision around your space and some of the, the patterns, the, mo the motifs and what inspired those. Okay, so in my own home um, I've used a lot of uh, nature inspired motifs. I've got a lot of birds, a lot of plants and a lot of plant motifs as well um, and that's really just what I love and I think that it's worth if you when you're doing your home to choose something that you love because then it comes naturally and organically and you can collect it's almost you know it's a process of curation um, collecting things that you love and and you'll see that they soon start to develop a language that speaks to each other. Aesthetics are one thing, but accessories can actually serve a functional purpose in a space, like mirrors. Tell us more about mirrors and what they can do for a space. I absolutely love using mirrors in a space. I think they add so much value. They're like functional art. Um, they create more light in a the space. They obviously reflect the room, so they make it look bigger. And it's also an opportunity to add something special um, the, in the way it's framed. I've used one in my guest Lou, just as an example. So we can go and have a look if you Oh, like. sure, let's do it. So this is the guest Lou. Um, and this is the mirror that I was talking about. Um, it's a nice, simple geometric shape. And I think it just adds a nice bit of glamour against the backdrop of the black and white wallpaper. I mean, this is a bathroom and adding glamour, I mean, I would have put this in like the foyer. And this is the kind of detail we're talking about, right? There's quite a lot of detail going on here. You've got wallpaper, there's frames. What are the other different things that we can do in bathroom spaces? Well, uh, wallpaper is a great one, especially for guest loos. Um, it's a nice, easy, quick way to um, really make an impact in a small space. And also because it's a small space, it won't be too expensive to use wallpaper. Um, and, and that being said, then I would keep all the other finishes to something very simple. So we've used just very uh, quiet white subway tiles, which are always a beautiful backdrop and they're also timeless and they won't date. Um, and then, yeah, very clean lines and, and simple fixtures everywhere else, which allows the wallpaper and the mirror to really be the stars of the show. So we have a viewer who has a few questions for us. So our viewer's name is Erna. This is her space. And she'd really like to add some class and sophistication in the space and particularly wants to jazz up her walls using photo frames or anything else that you might advise. How can she go about doing that? Firstly, I would um, move her little side tables, the trestle tables that I can see to either side of the sofa um, and then we're going to work with symmetry and balance around the sofa. So she should consider um, creating a gallery wall um, centered on the sofa, uh, uh, on the wall, um, using a collection of her favorite artworks um, and I think yeah a formal arrangement always works. Um, six, six prints like I've done here um, in a Th you know, three above three, all in straight lines. And that will really create a focal point. It's, it's not too bitty. It works as, it sort of reads as one piece, um, which is also nice. And if she was to add that sophistication within the frames, what are the different kinds of frames she could use to bring in that sophistication? Well, s well sticking with her theme, I think she should use a dark brown wood. Um, and maybe if she wanted to brighten it up a bit, she could use some uh, gold leaf, like I've done on, on these frames. It also just um, brightens it up, lifts it a bit. So she's got that wonderful couch and we've now centered the frames around this couch. What else can she do with it to bring it, you know, accessories in more detail, you know, thinking about class and sophistication? So again, I think um, she could use some scatter cushions um, in quite a luxurious fabric, maybe consider something in velvet or something with a nice rich texture that always speaks of more comfort and luxury than just an ordinary cotton. Um, and she could also use a throw. Um, it would also make the space a lot warmer, a lot more comfortable and a lot more luxurious. Thank you, Kelly. Well, Erna, it seems like you can bring in a lot of class and sophistication to your space. Just think luxury, think plush, and you'll be there. And if you're a viewer who also needs advice, mail us on info at thehomechannel.co.za. After the break, we chat to Andrew McKenzie as he changes up the space using elements of greenery.
Welcome back. Now we have Andrew McKenzie and he shows us how he brings life into a space by using elements of greenery. We all want our homes to be that tranquil, cosy fortress that allows us to be at leisure after an eventful day. By simply adding decorative items that suit your taste, creating the desired look and feel is uncomplicated. Andrew McKenzie makes use of nature-inspired accessories to transform a neutral lounge. Natural elements in a living space, I always say that uh, nature equals nurture. I find that uh, natural elements always bring warmth and uh, a coziness to interior. If you're going to use a natural element, let's make sure we can see that it's natural, such as the grain of the wood or um, the stone that you might be using or the, the weave of the basket. But I think natural interiors add personality, texture, coziness, warmth, and at the moment, certainly trend. We're standing now in what could be considered a very sort of neutral uh, living room environment which doesn't really have much style. Is it tending towards the organic, the natural, the contemporary? One's not quite sure. And what we're going to do now is show you quick, clever ideas of taking a basic living room and giving it that wow factor and of course bringing in the subject of using natural elements and of course our Pantone green tones. A home should always have a point of interest and what I noted about this particular living room is that there wasn't really much happening behind the sofa so I'm taking opportunity of bringing in our natural element, in this case we we're using some succulents, natural succulents and of course wicker which always adds that warm textural element and just placing it behind here with our mirror, adding a little bit more greenery and just making sure it's nice and full and of course creating effect at a very cost effective price. I know you've heard it a hundred thousand times, accessories make all the difference, and yes they do. In this case I've chosen some green botanical two-dimensional prints for our scatter cushions, just picking up on the succulents that we chose earlier, bringing in a more natural green element to the sofa, and of course taking a normal sofa into a little bit more of an interesting one. Changing up your living space with new accessories every now and then can keep it current and refreshing. The end result is even more rewarding when you have a good base to work with. Timeless furniture pieces allow you to create endless looks simply by changing your accessories. Zane Pretorius of Block & Chisel tells us about investing in furniture that's trans-seasonal. I think we've moved on from where we were 10 years ago where it was more about having something new all the time or on a seasonal basis and I think What's so wonderful is we've moved back to investing in pieces that have got more longevity. People are wanting to have pieces that can become heirlooms or, or antiques of the future. One doesn't always have to throw out your sofa in order to create a new look. Try and look at your sofa with new eyes. For example, here we've got a natural wicker sofa that just has some plain white cushions. And I personally think that's a great choice because one can revolutionize that sofa, in fact, almost seasonally at a very low cost. Don't be afraid to add things to your interior, be it modern or traditional. Sometimes just one object doesn't quite crack the mustard. And just by simply adding another jar with some greenery, just can do the trick. I would like to just give one tip, play on levels, and in that case, levels create interest. The wonderful thing about South Africa is that you can't blink without bumping into wonderful natural and handmade items. Baskets are great and practical, side tables and stools made out of stone, Adding character, personality, and of course, sometimes we're under pressure by that significant other that we're not quite allowed to get rid of certain things, can actually add more interest to a room. So here I've got two rather interesting looking objects, parrots, and I'm going to place them next to our contemporary chair, filling up that space, adding accessories, sense of humour, and of course, complementing the general look. When achieving a contemporary home, but also wanting to inject those natural elements, don't fear, nature doesn't have to take over. For example, if we have a look here, I've now started to introduce some footstools, which are multifunctional. We can use them as side tables, coffee tables, etc. And of course, um, in terms of bringing a bit of a fun element, and of course, leaning towards the contemporary, a bright spot of red. I think when buying anything, and I suppose this boils down to whether it be fashion or home industry, is 
don't be afraid to really look over the piece and say for example if you're buying a sofa or an armchair take a moment to to sit in a piece take a moment to investigate a piece if you're buying a cupboard open the cupboard doors have a look at the inside um, have a look at the hinges and those smaller details that for you at the time might not be important but in the long term are going to show the wear and tear of a piece. Well there we have it, there we have our contemporary home injected with our natural elements and I don't know about you but I know that I think Bella and I are quite happy, the only question is hopefully our client will be. Come on Bells. Nature equals nurture. I personally believe that having plants in a space is a must and they quite often signify the owner's sense of life and also their state of mind. I don't know what you think Kelly, how can we use plants to accessorise a home? I have to agree with you, I think it's a great way to accessorise, um, it's also very inexpensive and um, yeah, they have a very sculptural quality about them. So you can really use them anywhere, in an awkward corner, in a dark space, just to bring some life. Um, one thing I would say is that maybe stay away from flowering plants and stick to um, beautiful greenery um, because that's kind of like a neutral and it can go with everything. Beautiful greenery being like the plants that evergreens and succulents. Yeah, succulents are a great one because they um, are very difficult to kill, <laughs> <laughs> which is why I have them everywhere in my home. And yeah, they, they're so many different types, so it's a good option. Yeah, I absolutely love it. If you were to give our viewers, though, one final piece of advice, what would that be? Um, I think I would say keep it simple. Um, by that I mean choose a direction um, and stick with it and be consistent throughout your home. So um, when it comes to finishes, don't try and do too much. Choose three or four finishes and repeat them throughout the house. So, you know, if it's wood, use it throughout. If it's marble, use it throughout. Um, and don't try and, and do too much so that it's a patchwork quilt. When in doubt, always, yeah, pair it back. Thank you very much, Kelly, for chatting to us and having us in your home. Um, we wish you all the best with your career. Thank you, and thanks so much for and coming. And like dabbling with your journalistic design head. Yeah. That's fantastic. Thanks so much. Thank you. Well, this was a really elaborate topic, and we've covered quite a lot. The challenges is making choices in a world full of options, but the best part is having options. But remember to keep it personal. Indulge, take it all in. Till the next time, ciao.